current treatment options for thromboembolic complications or prevention of thromboembolic diseases, such as prevention of DVT, prevention of PE, or prevention of stroke for non-valvular AFib. Uh, we've had warfarin as a mainstay of anticoagulation for uh, as the only oral anticoagulant. And uh, most recently, we've had multiple oral, direct-acting oral anticoagulants hit the market. Um, we have um, oral 10A inhibitors, and we have one um, direct thrombin inhibitor that's um, now available on the market for, for treatment of these diseases. Um, they, uh, they've offered now an arena where we can um, anticoagulate patients without having the frequent monitoring required for warfarin. Um, so some of the challenges with uh, managing warfarin and maintaining a therapeutic INR are um, warfarin has drug-drug interactions, also has diet-drug interactions. So um, education for patients to make sure they keep a consistent diet in vitamin K containing foods um, and also then the, the frequent monitoring are issues for patients. Um, so not all patients. Some patients like the frequent monitoring. It's an access point for patients uh, into the health system uh, to, uh, to have not only their INR monitored, but it's also an access point where the clinician, whether it be a physician, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, pharmacist, RN, uh, registered nurse, essentially um, seeing the patient, touching the patient through a phone call, um, assessing the anticoagulation, but also during that uh, contact with the patient, other changes in health for that patient can be uh, also assessed. But as we've now, um, as healthcare has changed, access for patients is becoming more difficult. Um, and also, as we move into the younger populace, uh, patients want to be uh, managed but not bothered. And the uh, essentially, um, the managing warfarin, having the patient come in frequently, a minimum once a month, sometimes more often if the patient's unstable, is also a burden to healthcare as we actually have healthcare utilization or resource utilization to manage warfarin. Another option for managing warfarin is patients can be given a home um, INR monitoring device. Uh, there are several available on the market, commercially available, and patients can be given that home finger stick device. So it's like a bl home blood glucose meter uh, where the patients can self-test and then report the results of that test back to their monitoring clinician to essentially make any changes and make sure the patient's at appropriate therapeutic range. Um, that is an option. It, it's, it's being used more often. Um, and uh, but I, I, I would say that it's still, again, resource utilization um, with warfarin. Some of the drug interactions and side effects uh, for warfarin um, are, are, you know, we've seen it, uh, you know, in the literature um, for patients. There's patient pamphlets we give. So current diet interactions are green leafy vegetables. So broccoli, asparagus, lettuce, cabbage, anything that's green and leafy, the darker the green, the higher the vitamin K content, therefore the more it's going to interact with the patient's warfarin therapy. Um, in the area of the country where, um, where I live, the, one of the um, cultural, cultural foods uh, is liver. And liver is a body store or storage for vitamin K. So if a patient is on warfarin and they eat a small portion of liver, it actually reverses the effect of warfarin 100%. So as warfarin, the, the mechanism of action for warfarin is the prevention of the production of clotting factors that are vitamin K dependent of 2, 7, 9, and 10. So by the patient eating the liver, um, they would actually reverse the effects of warfarin. Secondarily, uh, for drug interactions, there are multiple drug interactions. So there are some direct drug interactions. Um, so for instance, Bactrim, Flagyl, um, which Diflucan, Dicloxacillin, Nafcillin, Rifampin, uh, thyroid, so thyroid replacement, and then also the antithyroids, they all affect, um, as for drug-drug interactions, affect warfarin therapy. On the other side, we have disease interactions. So patients that have heart failure, um, warfarin, and it follows water. So if the patient is third spacing or has peripheral edema or abdominal edema, and the INR is therapeutic, when we, when we monitor them, if we've now instructed the patient to increase their diuretic to, um, to help with the heart failure symptoms, the INR will actually elevate from, or will go up from the um, fluid. 
um, third spacing issue. Secondarily is hepatic congestion. So if it, also with the liver, if a patient has heart failure and we have hepatic congestion, we're not producing clotting factors, which then will in turn affect the warfarin therapy and the INR will become super therapeutic. So multiple issues with managing warfarin to take into consideration.